Okay, so the video that I'm gonna do now is go over what went wrong with my November budget. The reason why I feel this video is important because there's a lot of myths that go around when it comes to budgeting. First of all, a lot of people seem to think that when you make a higher income, you don't necessarily need to be that strict with your budget, that you have more room to play, and you kind of do, and that you have more room to kind of freestyle or maybe not even use a budget, right? Another thing is some people seem to think that once you're debt free, once you have been budgeting for months and months and months, let's say even a year, that you can afford to relax. Well, guys, you can't. That's what happened in my situation. I relaxed. So just like any good business, you have to go over what you did correctly, what you could have done better, and what you're going to improve moving forward. So I did that assessing myself and what went on with November, right? I have a notebook here. So let's talk about this. One of the things that I feel went wrong with my November is I did not listen to my instinct. Instinct to me is that internal guidance system, along with your emotions, that kind of lets you know if you're on the right path or maybe if you should take some caution or a little uh, nagging thing that says, wait a minute, stop, don't do anything. I take my money very seriously. So while sometimes you can say, well, it was only $50 or it was only this. Nah, baby, that's how we go broke, $10 at a time. And that in the same vein is how we will gain our riches, $10 at a time. I value every single dollar that comes into my experience, right? So some of the um, main instincts was two. When and I've told you guys this before, so bear with me again because I'm gonna tell you again. And there's some people who probably didn't watch the other video that I said this before. In so, two things in November one, I bought a ticket to this French embassy event where they were doing the unveiling of the Bully Boo wine, <laughs> it's a wine, Bully Boo wine. I don't even remember the name of the wine. But basically, it was like about a $65 ticket, $60, $67 ticket. And when I heard about the event, I thought it was fun. And then when my friend Corinne told me that the event cost $67, I paused like, eh. I didn't want to trade $67 for that experience at that time. But then talking to her and we laughed about how ridiculous I sound because first thing she said she was like oh I got you I'll pay for it and then I thought about it I was like dang I have five thousand dollars left over in my budget no I think it was close to six thousand I had like about six thousand dollars left over in my budget this was after I paid my bills after I gave away gifts after I did everything I wanted to do um I still had six thousand dollars left over so in my mind I'm thinking I'm tripping over sixty seven dollars when I have over six thousand in expendable income left over so I was like oh, don't worry I'm gonna go ahead and and do that but now in hindsight because what happened is I end up not going to the event only because something else popped up and I did not get back into town till the morning, actually the afternoon of the event. So I knew that I was like, I needed to rest. I was tired. So I didn't even go to the event. And when I think about that, I feel like that first initial hesitation was because again, you know what they say, it is written. To me, I do feel like your life is kind of played out already there is a path this is the thing that psychics can tap into that energy where it's like you know what you're not even gonna be here for this event so that's that hesitation like you're gonna buy something that you're not even going to because something else is gonna happen and pop up that you're gonna go to instead so i really wish i would have listened to that hesitation because one of the things that we're taught is that Whenever something isn't a yes, whenever it isn't a hell yes, that means it's a no. And a lot of times we try to force ourselves to turn no's into yeses rather than leave them alone. 
It's not to say that a no cannot become a yes, but just wait, baby, relax, and let it be what it be. Because when that no is a no, it could be because when it turns into a yes, there could be a discount going on, a sale going on, somebody brought to gift you something going on. So that's the that one thing, listen to instinct. Train your instinct so that when you hear that little thing, you learn to listen to it. You learn you can trust it because you practice the art of trusting it. And in that instance, I wish I would have trusted my instinct. The other instance is I told you I got a ticket. Well, I got a ticket when I was out in D.C. And once again, I was attending something that I kind of really didn't want to attend that much anyway. I wasn't too enthused, but I went out of obligation. I went out of, you know, friendship, being a good friend. And, you know, I don't regret going, but that again, once again, I had the initial instinct to be like, mm, I could pass, but I didn't pass. I went. And a lot of people in this area know that DC has a lot of speeding traps, a lot of cameras, a lot of ridiculous speed limits. Like a lot of their speed limits on major streets are 25 miles per hour. Y'all know how hard it is to drive 25 miles per hour? And I'm talking about on a street that's like moving, not like a residential neighborhood where you just passing through, you know, rows of houses. I'm talking about on major highways, like three lanes, one direction streets and three lanes in another direction or even two and two. Um, so they have a lot of speed traps set up there and I got caught. I got caught slipping. So apparently <laughs> I was speeding and I got a ticket for $150. And I knew I had this ticket, but I forgot I had this ticket. Now, again, so the first mistake was I didn't listen to the hesitation to just say no in the first place, right? I didn't listen to that. And then the second thing brings us, all right, so the second thing brings us into, the next thing brings us into my second point of what went wrong what went wrong was simple avoidance tactics let me tell y'all <laughs> though I make money and I've always made a great income and I've always been blessed that no matter how much I made I've always had way more than I needed I've always had an abundance now let me tell you um some of you may have remember when I told myself my son I made $225 on the first and $225 on the 15th that $225 paid for my food paid for my car payment it paid it went far I even went on I was still going on vacations and I still have a savings account I noticed because baby I still have them budgets that I would write down my 225 and how I will budget that money out um so I never was like oh man I'm poor no I wasn't I was rolling and balling with that 225 I've always been a good steward of my money and watched it go amazingly far I was always able to help people help my family um I was always able to go on vacations. I was always able to do whatever I wanted to do. And I've always had more than enough. I just, it's, it's law. Law of attraction, the law, the, the law that is in the Bible. It is law, it is law. It's, it's, it's under the new covenant. You know, the new covenant that you know, you do not have to toil. No more toil. We are under the covenant of ask, ask. And it is given. And there is just so much nuance that goes into that. And it's some of the stuff that I study and I practice and, I, and my life is an example of. Um, but this ain't about that, is it? No, it's about my mistakes. Okay. So in my avoidance tactics, one of the things that I would do, because I did grow up in a very impoverished upbringing where we had a lot of lack. Um, and so one of the, the things from that in my life is sometimes I avoid, sometimes I avoid opening my mail. I do that. I avoid facing my bills, even though I have the money, it makes no sense. So that's one of the things that happened with this ticket. I had the ticket. I set it aside to pay the ticket, but I never actually got around to paying the ticket. And then I went on vacation. 
29 day vacation it totally forgot about it and so what happens is if you don't pay the ticket it doubles so a hundred and fifty dollar ticket turned into a three hundred dollar ticket once again in this avoidance thing um some of you seen my stacks of mail i think i might have a picture of all my mail that i haven't opened and and i had a thing a lot of my facebook friends know this where every now and again i will finally go through mail and i will find checks that were like three years old and I would have to have them reissue to me. I'm talking about hundreds of dollars in checks, thousands of dollars in checks, just stuff that would be in mail because I money always comes to me in the mail. Um, it's another talent I have. But yeah, so, but I say the avoidance because in that avoidance is was my property bills, my personal property taxes, and those came in the mail for the first go around i believe it was around june and then the second go around the bills were due in october i just opened that mail so needless to say i was late paying my personal property taxes and so therefore i had to pay a penalty on top of that and the taxes came to about fourteen hundred dollars um, I don't even know how much of that was in penalty, but I'm imagining it was like about maybe $200 in penalties. Um, yeah. And, and again, it was slipping back into those old habits of not staying on top of my bills, my old habits of not writing things down. So that brings us to the third thing that went wrong in November. What I do, I live by a calendar, I live by a journal. So I, like many people out there, I bullet journal. For me, it's the most effective. Um, and this is what my journal looks like. Let me tell you, I do not go out and I do not buy a, a for real legit bullet journal. I use any notebook that is free. <laughs> um, so this is the notebook that I'm using, it is free. And once this notebook is finished, I will pull out another journal. That's why I said in, um, you know, I don't know which order these videos are coming out with. But I have journals and sometimes I get journals that are gifts and I turn them all into bullet journals. My bullet journals are very effective and very efficient for my life. And I'm going to show you, give you guys a closer look on this bullet journal. But basically, I fell out of the habit of keeping up with my bullet journal, keeping up with my to-do list. See, had I been keeping up with a to-do list, let me tell you, something as simple as opening my mail actually goes on a to-do list because if it's not on a list, I don't do it. I am very list driven. I have an obsessive personality and in my obsessions, I like to just really get it done hence youtube is an obsession some of you may notice i watch the heck out of people's videos like i am obsessed with watching youtube videos commenting pressing thumbs up and just really being an active member in the youtube community it's an obsession this is what i do at one point i was i was obsessed with going to jamaica me and gwen because i think all my friends have obsessive personalities we're 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 achievers in our own way so we all have obsessive personalities but me and Gwen we would go to Jamaica every three months not just with me Gwen and Mercedes and Mercedes friends every three months we were just obsessed with Jamaica and obsessed with the culture we love it we are now obsessed with snowboarding and we hit them when we first started snowboarding we would be on the slopes every single weekend that we didn't have something to do and the closest um, mountains to us is about an hour and a half away, but we will get it. We will jump in any car and we would be gone. Um, I'm obsessed with travel. I get obsessed with things. I love being obsessed with things because I love having passion. I love being passionate about things. So I'm a list girl. I'm obsessed with lists. And when I make lists, I'm obsessed with getting the things done on my list. So I have to write down opening my mail. So you know what I mean? Because I wasn't keeping up with lists, I wasn't writing out opening mail, therefore mail wasn't getting open because it wasn't something I felt I needed to accomplish. Um, so what am I doing going forward? I'm getting back to my list. I'm getting back to my bullet journal and I am just really being mindful to stay on top of things. Because just like a piano, when you tune a piano, if you don't, keep tuning it if you don't put it on the schedule to have it tuned it will eventually go back to being out of tune 
your life will do the same. I don't care how long you have had a habit. If that habit isn't something that you have been born doing, you will eventually go back to being out of habit. Okay? This is why it is important for us when we budget to make sure we keep doing all those good practices, all of those good habits we put into place when we first started to budget. It is important for us to not to slack on our budgets because when we slack, we will go back into those old habits and our life will start looking the way it used to look. We will then have debt again. We will have credit card stuff again. We will have things we don't open i mean just bills that go on pay we will fall back into the way we used to be in november it slapped the heck out of me hundreds of dollars mismanaged hundreds of dollars that may not seem like much to some people and that may seem like everything to others but i do not take that lightly let me show you guys my journal okay guys this is my journal <laughs> and like I said it is a simple notebook it is a simple spiral notebook that I got for free and I turned this into my thing right I have stickers I don't know where they at right now but just a bullet journal for those who you who don't know you can look this up this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to bullet journal but what I really did was made my journal practical and efficient for me and then you'll write down your your calendar so this is your dates and these are like the days that they are and you'll write down what you have going on and then this is a to-do list right and then because it's a list you can start writing see this was ideas I had for um, Mercedes's gender reveal party so because it's a notebook you can just basically write out whatever you need to write out in a notebook now let me tell you what I do in mine I love sticky notes I am a sticky note queen okay so this is what I do my monthly bullet journals ball down to two pages it used to be four pages but now it's really down to two pages so basically for my December I write down all the days and whatever I have going on right this is even down to how many hours I want to work at least to meet goals and stuff right and then on this same page I write out my to-do list I just write it in as the things pop up this isn't even necessarily a daily it's just whatever may pop up that I should do that's what I write down and it can just take up wherever it could be written wherever and then I also keep a production schedule and this is for my YouTube channel of the videos I want to make when I plan on releasing them and then I write down over here ideas because ideas are forever popping in for YouTube like this was last October November and on this side of the page is all the ideas that popped up and then if they're crossed off, that means I actually executed the ideas. And if not, I haven't gotten around to them yet. But I can always revisit these if I'm looking for something to do or a video I want to make. Now, you can see right here, like, look at October and November. Look at how this things to do and everything. Look how, you know, blank this page is. This is me falling out of the habit. Now, I love sticky notes. <laughs> so that's what all this is. So a lot of times I may pick things that I want from that day. And I make a little sticky note of the things I want to accomplish that day in different areas. Um, these were ideas for my What Went Wrong With November video. These are ideas for budgeting with my son video. Um, these are some cleaning goals I have. Um, yeah, probably more budgets and things like that. And that's what all of this is. So that's basically simple, simple in a nutshell, what I do with my bullet journal. And I visit this every day. I keep it open every day. I write down my ideas every day. I write down my thoughts every day. I check out my to-do list every day. And I make an active goal to actually accomplish some things on that list. 
Oh, and I want to give out a shout out to The Real Coach Key. It was from her channel, again, with my watching so many YouTube channels. And I really try to take away some great things from every channel that I watch. So with The Real Coach Key, what I loved was when she does her budget assessment, she goes over what she did well and what she didn't do so well and that whole thing. So, um, so yeah, so I wanted to apply that to my budgets and my budget talks too. So thank you. So basically that is it y'all. That is what went wrong with my November. Those are the lessons I learned from November and those are the things I'm gonna do better moving forward. And I wanna know, do you guys have a process like this? Do you have a process where you sit back and you review and you reflect almost like an after actions review on what you did wrong and what you could have done better on what you did right? What do you give yourself praise on and what do you say, you know what, you could do better in that area. What are you going to do better? What are you going to do better? Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for liking. Thank you all for subscribing. Until next time, peace.